All right, you got the bug. You got a 03 to 07 5.9 liter truck. Maybe you got a tune on it. Got it turned up a little bit, feeling the power. Now you go to use it for towing. You go to use that power for anything you bought the truck for. And what do you notice right away? EGTs start coming up, maybe a little extra smoke. Maybe the engine coolant temp starts creeping up a little bit. You want to use that power. You want to use that tuner and that fuel system. Eventually, you're going to have to put a turbocharger on the truck. But first, I want you to check your stock turbo out. I want you to check your truck out and make sure you're in good mechanical shape before we decide what turbocharger to put on the truck. Stock HE341s and HE351s are in a tough spot. They're right on the side of the engine and the tire, when it's turned to the right, especially with salt, slings all sorts of nasty stuff all over that turbocharger. After 10, 15 years of that, these things take a lot of abuse. It's not uncommon to see failures due to poor maintenance, due to poor weather conditions or environmental conditions, or just overheating and abuse. So let's take a second and check out that turbocharger. First thing I want you to do is check the intake. Some of you guys might have filter minders if you have aftermarket intakes. Some of you might not have filter minders. The number one thing a turbocharger needs is clean, fresh air. If you have a clogged air filter, maybe you live in a dusty climate, or maybe you park under a tree and you got a bunch of twigs and squirrel nests, whatever the hell it is, right? Pull that air filter lid off, check the air filter, make sure it's in good shape, and make sure the seal is tight between it and the filter neck that goes down to the turbocharger. If things aren't clean, take that air filter and clean it off, whatever the manufacturer recommends. If it's a replacement air filter, buy a replacement air filter. If it's hoses down with Simple Green and run it out with hot water and blow it off, do that. I don't care what you do, just make sure it's clean. Next. Take the elbow off the factory turbocharger. So that's the inlet, the piece that fits right on the front of the turbocharger right here. I want you to peer inside the turbocharger. Spin it, does it spin freely? That's good, it should. Feel it side to side. Should have a little bit of play without oil in it. Does it feel like it scraped the inside of the compressor cover at all? Look inside the compressor cover. Is there any visual damage of aluminum on aluminum? Look at the blades on the compressor wheel. Do they look dusted? That is, are they rounded or do they not go all the way to the edge of the compressor cover? They should be sharp looking and they should have a sharp edge right at the edge of the compressor cover. Rounded blades, no good. Buffed off the edge of the, by the compressor cover, it's a loss in efficiency. You've lost a lot of power off of that. All right, next thing I want to have you do after inspecting the compressor wheel is check the hose that goes from the compressor cover to the wastegate can. Oftentimes they get burned or damaged or leak if the hose looks good, good, leave it alone. If it looks burned or damaged or torn or leaking at all, replace it. Now for the fun part. This takes a little extra time, but trust me, it's totally worth it. We do it on every truck that comes through the shop and we find a ton of boost leaks. Make an apparatus like this. You can use a PVC end cap or you can get something fancy like this. Put it on the face of the compressor cover, just like so, okay? I got a boost gauge here and I got a fitting I can hook my um, air source up to. Regulate your air source down to 20 PSI or put a gauge on so you know not to go past that. If you fill this thing up too far and this, this uh, boost tester flies off the front of the turbocharger, it's a nightmare, so avoid that. Okay, what you're gonna wanna do is air this thing up to about 10 PSI. You don't have to block off anything else on the engine. You don't have to block, take any other pipes off or block them. It's a non-overlap engine. The system should hold air if you just put air right to the front of the turbocharger. Everything else hooked up. If it doesn't hold air, you'll hear a hiss. You don't need to get water out. You don't need to get a smoke machine, nothing fancy. Hear the hiss, find the hiss. Once you find the hiss, that's your boost leak. Odds are you have boost leaks, okay? Find them, replace them. Might be your intercooler, might be boots that are loose, might be torn boots, might be lost intake gaskets, might be a grid heater that's effed up. Get your boost leak sorted out. You should be able to pressurize this thing to 20 PSI and have it hold and leak down through the rings only in the motor. So you might lose one PSI per second. If you don't hear any hissing and you only have one PSI per second pressure loss, we'll call that good. After you're done with the boost test, I want you to look over the exhaust manifold. Look at all the gaskets as they connect the exhaust manifold to the head. You shouldn't have any excessive black soot under the hood. You shouldn't have any wisps of black smoke around those exhaust gaskets. You shouldn't have any wisps of black smoke around the flange here that bolts the turbocharger to the exhaust manifold. Boost pressure loss, definitely bad. Losing drive pressure can be just as bad because that energy needs to be used by the system to build boost. If you're losing drive pressure, no good. So we want to seal up the exhaust and seal up the boost system. Once the system's all sealed up and you know your stock turbocharger is good and operating the way it should, if you have excessive EGTs, if you have excessive smoke, if you have poor drivability and poor performance, and you want more, it's time to buy a turbocharger. You've done the most you could with the factory unit. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm Nick Pregnitz. 
Thanks for watching.